he was not um, an amateur. He was not a dabbler or a weekend warrior. He was a true committed artist to the core for life from before, well, long before I met him. I mean, it's funny because it's a really individual style of playing. It's funny to say that I wanted that and I copied him to get it, but you know, when you, if you sat down and played right after he played, you'd just kind of like be in his zone because he has like such this like infectious presence and kind of just like fills the whole room. It was like searching within myself to find music and 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 like something pure and to play or true, you know, you know what I mean? It's just like he was after and he was teaching me to kind of go after the more important things in playing drums or playing music. It was more like not what to play, but why are you playing it? Because he wanted to find somebody that would teach me the traditional jazz grip with the stick held in the left hand like that. And, uh, Amazing guy. I had a lot of respect for him. Taught me a lot of things about music. Yeah, he had a very, very innate sense of rhythm. It was very, very deep. He taught me how to play sounds along. I mean, he had the technique stuff and all that in the hand position, but it was more about using it as as, as an instrument, as as an art. It felt it felt different than just your normal drumming approach. It was listening to sounds and paying attention to, uh, yeah, this amazing ability of getting you to express yourself, you know, even when you're an insecure teenager, to sort of be okay with that and feel safe enough to sort of play what's inside of you. A funk thing that that um, was kind of new to me, the way he wrote it out, I'd never really played anything like that before, and, and it, it took me a minute to get it, but once I did get it, I remember watching your dad uh, just grooving on what I was doing. I remember him being like, yeah, yeah. I remember being like, ah, he just, he loved it, it, he, it felt good. Right. And uh, uh, I could feel that enthusiasm from him, that, you know, he was enjoying what I was playing. Uh, he had like this accent, of course, from Brooklyn, you know, he had this like, Do you have an this, he had like this attitude, you know, he called everybody maestro, you know, hey maestro, what's up? Um, he was like a swan with those brushes on those canasonic heads, those late nights um, at the Lion's Den. I went through a period where I would go hear Randy all the time. Of all the drummers that I had experienced in my life up to that time, I had never experienced a drummer that um, was a feel drummer. And by that I mean uh, Randy drummed for the second that he was in, the moment that he was in. One of the most like memorable things he, he said to me that stuck with me through, uh, actually through like my entire time of drumming was he said, Whenever you play, whenever you play a gig and you get off, and some you know people say you did a great job, but you always have that one person who says, "Well, you really suck." And he said, just look in their eyes and be like, "Thank you. Have a good day." One of the things I loved, though, I loved how 
never played brushes, and I don't know anybody, no drummer who would hear him play drums, wouldn't think to themselves, ooh, ooh, nice. Thank you.